Tonight, the baby that riveted the nation. Baby Holly found 40 years later. Tonight here, my exclusive interview with her and what happened. 2020 starts right now. This is the story of a young family, their identities lost and then suddenly found again. A mystery that would defy belief. And it all started with this sudden arrival of a baby. I heard a knock at the back door. There were two ladies. They looked like they just walked right out of the Bible. I had never seen anybody like that in my whole life. They said, we need somebody to take care of a baby. You know, she, it was, she was a gift from God. It's like a mystery and a mystery and a mystery. This is just one of several stunning turns in the story. There would be another in the woods of Houston. So it was days before they actually discovered the two bodies, and they were right here in the woods? Both bodies were um, bound. It was a young man and a young woman. They likely knew the people who killed him. The hunt for answers to what really happened in those woods would actually lead investigators across the country and to a second mystery. Yeah, I'm getting chills, too, just talking about what happened to this baby? My brain just was on fire. How can a child be missing for 40 years and nobody know where she is? It sounds like a scene from a movie or something, right? All pieces started to come together. The woman behind the headline, Baby Holly, who made national news, sharing her journey for the first time from lost to found. Holly, it's great to finally meet you. Thank you, David. David Muir reporting, Baby Holly found. The exclusive 2020 event starts right now. This is the story of a young family, their identities lost and then suddenly found again. A mystery that would span decades, it would crisscross states, defy belief, and it all started with this sudden arrival of a baby. I heard a knock at the back door. There were two ladies in white. They looked like they just walked right out of the Bible. I had never seen anybody like that in my whole life, never. One of them was holding a baby, probably about eight or nine months. They said, we need somebody to take care of a baby. It was a shock for sure. But this startling delivery of a baby at the steps of the church is just one of several stunning turns in the story. There would be another major turn thousands of miles away in the woods of Houston. January 6th, it was a sunshiny day, uh, but it was, it was cool. It's very common for our three shepherds to run off through the woods, do their hunting, their barking, their frolicking, whatever they were doing. Me and my friend came back to the house. As we start walking this way, our shepherd comes around the corner and she's got something in her mouth. Well, as she got closer, she dropped that something right in front of us. And it was a human arm. From just above the elbow down to the fingertips. Never imagined that in a, in a million years. I called my parents and told them what had happened. Eventually, the police showed up. So the call comes in. January 6th, 1981. Yes, so the police came out, and then the search began in the area. And back then, there wasn't, there wasn't anything here. Houston is 660 square miles. Back in the 80s, it wasn't anywhere near as developed as it is now. You got all hands on deck, trying to find where this arm came from. There's nothing out there. This is in the sticks, rural Houston. Not a lot going on on Wallaceville Road. You don't imagine anything like that ever happening. So it was days before they actually discovered the two bodies, and they were right here in the woods? They were. They're about 100 feet from the roadway and about 50 feet from this access road, right pretty much through this path. What did the distance into the woods 
tell you about what might have happened? Well, the lengths at which they would have had to come back here seem a little odd. Highly vegetated. It's not easily walked. We don't know if they were killed elsewhere and brought to this location or if they were killed at this location. But the mere fact that they're deep into the woods here uh, means there was an effort to get them back yes, here. Yes, absolutely. Investigators start by thinking they're searching for one body. Now suddenly they have the near skeletal remains of two people about 10 to 12 feet apart. What else did they find with these bodies? Both bodies were um, bound and appeared that there were not very many clothes in the area. There was a pair of green shorts found. It was a young man and a young woman, and there was just really very little indication of what had happened. And the medical examiner was able to determine that the female victim had likely died from asphyxiation and that the male victim had likely died from blunt force trauma to the head. When investigators learned from the ME just how brutal their deaths were, what did that say to you about the people who might have done this? It tells me that they likely knew the people who killed them because they were bound, strangled, and blunt force trauma. Those are all really up close and personal ways in which she would kill somebody. The medical examiner in the case uh, is able to determine that the female victim is likely between 15 and 18 years old, the male victim between 17 and 24. Harris County investigators are really scratching their heads. They're able to put together sketches of the pair's reconstructed faces and put those sketches out to the media, but no one came forward. In 1980 and 1981, the resources for identifying people were, were more limited than they are today. They casted their fingers to try to get fingerprints. You could compare dental records. They did that. They were not able to find any dental records. This medical examiner's investigator talked about the teeth of these victims being in immaculate condition. You would expect maybe that these are people that people would look for, or their relatives, their loved ones, their friends. So no match on the fingerprints. The dental uh, turns up nothing either. There were no IDs on them, no paperwork, no wallets, nothing else attached to these no, bodies. Absolutely nothing else that could identify these people. If you don't know who the victim is, you can't really complete any investigative steps. They were just basically labeled a John Doe and a Jane Doe. The case just goes on a shelf. They were buried right here in this county cemetery. No headstones, no family paying its respects. Instead, Jane Doe and John Doe marked with a simple nondescript concrete marker here in this strip of land. They are among the hundreds of anonymous souls that have been buried here through the decades. So many families across this country wondering what happened to their loved ones. But in this case, it was about to take a turn. Forty years of emotions, 40 years of looking. This case would take years to unravel. There was a story there. We just didn't know what it was and they decide that they are going to figure out who these people are. It was extraordinary hope because DNA technology was new. Right. I picked up the phone and said, I think I just solved this case. It would make national news. This is truly remarkable. A 42-year-old cold case. So many questions. The Lynn and Class family have been searching for answers. Their loved ones were found beaten and strangled to death. The shock of it is all finally starting to set in. And the hunt for answers to what really happened in those woods would actually lead investigators across the country and to a second mystery. I'm getting chills just talking about it. What happened to the baby?